Not everything happening to you is caused by Satan. Some things are happening because of our sins. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. Where is the glory you are expressing? Glory must not be known. Glory can be peace of mind. Glory can be love. Glory can be joy. If you are single, activate it. You have favor. Activate it. Shut the door and cry and say, Oh God, give me my own husband. Hey! Exodus chapter 34, verse 27 to 35. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the, of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, Behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came here, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. 34. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. 35. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put on the veil on, on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The glory of his presence. Hallelujah. We can talk about the glory of the presence of God when we do not know who God is. Before we can experience the glory of his presence, we must first of all know him. Just knowing God is his presence. Just knowing God is his presence. Ask yourself, do I really know God? Do you really know God? Not about who he is to you. Not about what he can give to you. 
not about what he has just to know who this God is just knowing God is his presence just knowing God is his presence if we read the book of Psalm 100 and verse 3, please let's get to Psalm 100 and verse 3. It says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Note verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are not, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That is knowing God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Go back to verse 3. It says, Know that the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us. It is He who has made us. And not we ourselves. We are His people. The sheep of His pasture. So if you must experience the glory of the presence of God, you must know him. When you have the understanding of who God is, then you will give reverence to him. When you have the understanding of who God is, then you will receive him into your heart. You will receive him into your life because you have knowledge of who he is. You cannot experience the glory of a God you've not received. You cannot experience the glory of a God you know nothing about. You cannot experience the glory of a God you have not accepted. So for you to experience the glory of the presence of God, you must repent. You must be a born again. Is somebody getting me? You must repent. You must be a born again. In order for you to experience that presence. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. Acknowledge that you have made errors and you confess your sins to him and he's able to forgive you. David cried in Psalm 51 and verse 1. He says, be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins. For you to experience the glory of the presence of God, you must be a born again. You must receive Christ. You must know him. You must accept him. People of God, there is glory in the presence of God. I said it earlier that the presence, the glory of the presence is an experience. It is an experience when you abide in the presence of God. I can't teach you what the presence of God is until you experience it. When Moses came down to the mountain, the people could not understand why Moses' face was shining. They could not explain the, the, the shining of Moses' face. But that was the glory of God. Words cannot explain it until you experience it. Words cannot ex explain it until you have that encounter. Then it will be for you what it's not to me the glory of his presence the presence of God is everywhere the presence of God is in church the presence of God is out of church but if you must experience the dimension of his glory there must be a place you must have a place The presence of God is everywhere. But if you must experience the glory of his presence, then there must be a place. That is why we come to church. That is why we don't go to the hospital to, to fellowship with God. 
But does that mean we should not fellowship in the hospital? Of course we should. But when it comes to encountering God, there must be a place. That is why even in the church, this is an altar. When we come to church, we don't carry our chairs here. Because it has been consecrated and set apart for a particular purpose. It can be a physical stage. But it is a secret place. That is why anything cannot be done here. Because it has been consecrated. That's why people can come from out, outside. Even when the prophet is not there. They come and kneel down and pray and they have answers. Because there is a covenant. It has been consecrated. It is a secret place. Do you have a place of fellowship? Do you have a place of fellowship? I said God is everywhere. The presence of God is everywhere. God may appear to you in the market. He may give you some directions or some instructions on your way to, to the office. But when God means business with you, he won't speak to you in the public place. He will constrain you to consecrate yourself. Bible says in Matthew 18 and verse 20, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am amongst them. So God is everywhere. The presence of God is everywhere. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that you will give birth to a son, you will give birth to the Messiah. I'm not sure Mary was in the secret place like Hannah who was in the temple praying. I'm sure maybe Mary was either cooking or doing laundry. But the angel of God appeared to her. So the presence of God can be anywhere. It can be anywhere. Jesus speaking in Matthew 4 and verse 17. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He was simply saying that God is here. He was simply saying that God is here. So the presence of God is everywhere. But it takes a man or a woman who is determined to meet God. There must be a secret place. The glory of the presence of God is not a joke. The glory of the presence of God is not a confession. It is a manifestation of God in different dimensions. And you cannot experience it if you are not abiding. That is why God asked the prophet to build a tower for his people. So that they can have fellowship with him. So that he can reveal himself to, to them. That is why we have prayer rooms, we have prayer mountains, we have altars where we go there and we meet God. You will hear the prophet always say, while in the place of prayers, while in the place of prayers, because he is abiding. It is because he is abiding. If God didn't speak to him, that my son, start a church for me. And it shall be called apostolic gospel mission. We will not be here today. If God didn't tell him build a tower. People who come there and pray and have answers. They won't have such answers. Because I said when God means business with you. He won't speak to you in the public place. Moses was always with the people. But when God needed to speak with him. He would go in, into the tent. To speak with God. Do you have a secret place? Are you abiding in the presence of God? The prophet of God is abiding. And that is why God can unveil nations to him and unveil him to nations. Because he is abiding. That is why God can tell him out of AGM, saviors will arise because he is abiding. That is why God can tell him this is a month of the glory of his presence because he is abiding. 
That is why he can give prophecies about nations, about what God is saying in a particular point in time because he is abiding. Do you have a secret place? Evil, activate it. Shut the door and cry and say, oh God, give me my own husband. Hey! Do you have a secret place? Are you abiding in the presence of God? In as much as our lifestyles or the state of our heart should be an offering to God, there must be a place. There must be a place. There are some persons whom if God has to speak with them, they'll have to enter into their car. Some women, God speaks to them, there, is, there's a there can be a particular position in your house where when you stand there, God speaks to you. That is why it must be very spiritual and highly sensitive. You can get this carpet and put it in one corner of your house and kneel there and pray and God speaks to you. But many people will not understand. Because anything outside God's presence leads to, to pain and destruction. Do you have a secret place? Is God speaking to you? So the presence of God can be everywhere. Because the presence of God is God himself. But if you must experience the glory, you must stay in his presence. Tell your neighbor, for you to experience the glory of his presence, you must stay in his presence. Hallelujah. You get the glory when you stay in his presence. Hallelujah. So we can't talk about the glory without talking about the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I said the presence of God, the glory of God is God himself. The presence of God is God himself. The presence of God is the hand of God. The presence of God is the mind of God. The presence of God is the finger of God. All these are manifestations of different dimensions of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see some few examples. How do we assess his presence? How do we have access into his presence? Number one, through a man. Through a man. In brackets, prophets or pastors. Through a man. One of the ways through which we access the presence of his glory is by a man. Like I said, if God didn't speak to his servants, we will not be here today. Some of us are experiencing a different dimension of God because he is there. He has availed himself for God to speak to him. The very first thing you need in order for you to have access into the presence of God is a man. A man. After the Holy Spirit is a man. A man spoke to you to receive Christ. That is why we go out for evangelism. That is why God has commanded us to win souls. We need men. You need a man. Moses was with the people. But God was speaking to Moses. Everybody didn't hear his voice. But he had to constrain Moses. To meet with him. You need a man. We have a prophet. We have a prophet, God's prophet, who is speaking to us every day of our lives, giving us directions, telling us God what God is saying about us, about our families, about our destinies, about the nations, about the church, and even about God himself. You need a man. 
is why we go out to win souls. We are here because people spoke to us. And others will come because we speak to them. If the Holy Spirit, if God Almighty could do it, he will not command us. To the extent where heaven will have to rejoice. So we need a man. We need a man. Even Jesus came and died. He had to become flesh as a man. He sacrificed himself for us. So we have to sacrifice for others. We need a man. And we have one from God. Who prays for us. He teaches us. He instructs us. He leads us. He guides us. We need a man. It is a man that must lead you to Christ. Even if Jesus appears to you, he will send you to a man. Even God Almighty and all the angels in heaven appear to you. He will send you say, go to this man. You need a man. If we see in the same Exodus 34 and verse 33, it says, And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he, he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel. Whatever he had been commanded, what he had been commanded. The prophet will come out always while in the place of prayers. God said this. God said this. God said this. Do we even believe to start with? Talk less of doing it. This is a man who spent time with God. Who speaks with God every day of his life. But when he comes and he gives instructions, we do not obey. We take them for granted. Who is that man over your life whom God is using him to speak to you? We need a man. I don't know about you, but I have a prophet. I have a prophet. Let us not use our life to do uh, ballet, ballet, what they call it. That's what I always tell my children. I say, you cannot use your life to, to do an experiment. We don't own it. We don't own our lives. Jesus has it. That is why we have to be very prayerful, spiritual, and highly sensitive. Hallelujah. We need a man. Number two, the word of God. How to have gain access into his presence, the word of God. In this dimension, you must know who God is and who he is to you. Hallelujah. You must know who God is, like I said earlier, and now who he is to you. This is where you know him in order for you to get intimate with him. You know him in order for you to get intimate with him. Not to ask for anything. In this dimension of glory, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your emotions. It has nothing to do with your, with your feelings. It's all about what God wants and not what you want. That's the dimension of glory. All about what God wants and not what you want. You go in for the word of God. You study to know who God is. Not to kill the, 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 the witch in your village. To know who he is. So you can acknowledge him. You can give reverence to him. So that you can worship him. What revelation do you have or know of God? I 
said that you cannot experience the glory of a God you know nothing about. What revelation do you know or have of God? If you are expecting his glory to be revealed in your life, what revelation do you know or have of him? People call him names because of their encounters. Who is he to you? Who is God to you? Who is God to you? Answer in your heart. True, true answer. Who is God to you? To me, he's my friend. Maybe after some time, he will change me from now. So I have the way I relate with him. My friend, he told me, he said, I am your friend. So sometimes, even when I misbehave, even in the place of prayer, I say, Baba, God, I beg you. You know, say, this Baba, hold me, just understand. And I will laugh. Sure, you say you are my friend. Understand? He's my friend. When you get intimate with him, there is a way you will relate with him. Not the way people relate with him. Not with the way people relate with him. That no matter what is happening, you are steadfast. The word of God. Hallelujah. Number three, worship. 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 After going in for knowledge on who God is and who he is to you, he now gives you understanding on how to worship him. The knowledge of God gives you understanding on how to worship God. This is where thanksgiving comes in. You worship God with understanding. With understanding. I'm not talking about praise. I'm talking about worship. Even when you are not singing, but your heart, your thoughts, your everything is dedicated to God. In praise, you cannot worship God without a revelation. It is difficult to worship God in spirit and in truth without a revelation. In praise, you can worship God without a revelation. But in worship, you can't worship without a revelation. Because in worship, God speaks. God speaks in worship. There is a voice in worship. His voice is heard in worship. But in praise, it is the voice of man that is heard. Even if my mind is not in the, in the praise, even if I'm not happy, I can be dancing and jumping and shouting and I'm, I say I'm praising God, but you cannot pray, worship God without a revelation. You must give your all. So for you to, 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 to worship God well, you must have knowledge of who he is. Worship. There is a voice in worship. Prayer. Prayer. In prayer, you ask or pray for his will to be done. That is submitting your will to his will. That is the dimension of glory. It's no longer all what you want to do. What does God want me to do? What does God want me to do? Prayer gives you a focus. It gives you a focus. Prayer creates space for you to connect to his presence. Prayer 
prayer makes the presence of God known in your environment and in your life. You pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give the Lord's prayer. His will. You submit your will under his will. What does God want me to do? And when you pray, he gives you the grace. The next point, fasting. Fasting. Fasting helps you to kill the desires of the flesh. It helps you to kill the desires of the flesh because it is an act of faith. Fasting is an act of faith. You don't see the reason why you are fasting, but you are fasting. It is an act of faith. You may just be thinking that, oh, I'm not eating. But you don't know the, 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 the boundaries you are breaking. People fast and there are results. But you may never know the kind of results that will come due to the fast. So you fast because it's an act of faith. An act of faith. It helps you to pay a personal price. Fasting helps you to pay a personal price. And it shows that you are serious enough about your prayer request. What happens when you walk in the glory of his presence? What happens when you walk in the glory of his presence? Number one, you manifest his glory by doing the impossible. You manifest his glory by doing the impossible. Things which men say are impossible, God begins to make them, make them possible in your life. Situations that men think they cannot change. God begins to turn them around for your good. This is what happens when you walk in the glory of his presence. You do the impossible. Number two, he empowers you to lead. He empowers you to lead. True leaders are carriers of his presence. True leaders are carriers of God's presence. I said anything outside God's glory leads to pain and destruction. So if you must lead as a husband, as a wife, as a father, as a brother, as a sister, wherever you find yourself, if you must lead, you must carry the presence of God. Leaders are not only pastors. You can be a leader in your class. You can be a leader at your place of work. You can be a leader anywhere. As long as you carry God's presence, you are good to go. He empowers you to lead. The principal gift here is wisdom. When God empowers you to lead, he gives you wisdom. Wisdom on what to do. Wisdom on what to say. Wisdom on how to say it. Wisdom on where to go. The next point, you walk in the supernatural. You walk in the supernatural. You walk in the supernatural. An example of a man who is walking in the supernatural is God's servant. Because he is abiding in his presence. He's walking in the supernatural. He can say the mind of God anytime, anywhere. Because he is abiding. That is why God can speak to him. God can reveal things to him. Reveal him to nations. Reveal nations to him. Because he's abiding. 
you must walk in the supernatural hallelujah and the last point you find rest you find rest you find rest the rest God is talking about is not a rest from physical or daily work it is that peace that God gives to those who love and obey him when you walk in the glory of his presence you have rest that rest is the peace that the world cannot give that money cannot give there's a limit to everything but God does not have any limit so when you walk in the presence when you abide in the presence of God to experience his glory you have rest it is that peace that God gives to those who love and obey him regardless of circumstances peace many of us are worried many of us are crying many of us are stressed up we are satisfied we are excited with the things created than the creator himself that is why we don't have rest we don't and there is nothing we can do about it as Christians there is a role we have to play we focus on the things created we focus on the we are excited about the things created and neglecting the creator we can't have peace but when we acknowledge him we have reverence for him we receive him into our hearts we receive him into our lives we have knowledge of who he is we worship him and we honor the men whom he has sent then we can have rest let us rise to our feet The glory of the presence of God is not a teaching. It is a lifestyle. I told you before I began, I said all what I'll say is just an introduction to bring to your awareness that there is this God kind of life. And if you do not abide, you will not have that experience. You won't have it. Man cannot, there is an there's a limit to what man can give to you. You must abide in his presence in order for you to experience his glory. Hallelujah. I favor and prevent it. Shut the door and cry and say, oh God, give me my own husband.